Welcome again to this Python Programming Bootcamp organized by UFLATS. Uh, UFLATS is a UK-based leading training provider and provides technology training to students across the globe. The instructor for today's session is Mr. Puneet. Puneet sir is an expert on Python, data science, and machine learning. So enjoy the session. Puneet sir, over to you. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Okay, so hi, everyone. Okay, let me share my screen first. So hope you can see my screen. So again, I welcome you all uh, for the Python bootcamp. Uh, so today on 24th October. So I'm speaking from India. So it depends on where your location is. So it may be good afternoon, good evening, and good morning. So let's start with the session. So the Today's complete Python bootcamp is brought to you by uh, Uplats. It's the leading training company based in UK. So I'll be training you and I'll be giving you a, a brief overview of why should you uh, learn Python? What are the advantages of learning Python? What is the future scope of learning Python? Okay, what are the, uh, what is the future of Python and what after learning Python you will be able to do, All right? So let's start with the session. So you can see the agenda for today's session. It will start with introduction to programming language, benefits of learning Python, career prospects, career prospects after learning Python, then understand the step-by-step -step journey of a Python programmer, then Python programming on the ground. So we will uh, try to run some basic and interesting Python programs uh, it's on a hands-on session, which will take around 15 minutes. Then we will see what after this bootcamp, what will you able to do after this bootcamp? And finally, I will dedicate some time for questions and answers. So hope I'm audible to you all. If you have any doubts or if you have any queries, you can raise your hands or you can ask me to pause for a while and you can put on your question. All right, so let's uh, go on. So first, the very basic thing you must understand why you should select Python, right? There are so many programming languages in market. You must have, or you might have learned few programming languages already in your career, I mean, in your student life. And uh, you will be interested to learn few other programming languages, but why should you choose Python as your first option? So I'm, um, it's not an exaggeration. Exaggeration. I have uh, downloaded some pictures which will show you how important is Python. So you can see the uh, survey from many websites. Python continues to be one of the best programming languages. Every developer should learn for the coming years, right? The language and uh, <clears throat> what is the difficulty level of Python? If you have learned C, C++, Java, so compared to Python, the language, I mean, compared to those languages, Python is very easy to learn and offers a clean and well-structured syntax. So you all must have heard about syntax, right? Syntax means structure of a program, correct? So it will allow you to develop powerful and decent web application or scientific application, machine learning application. So Python can be used for web and desktop applications, GUI based applications, which I will be giving you a small demo later on all these applications, then machine learning and data science, all of you uh, must be aware of how important machine learning, artificial intelligence and data science are in today's world. Every company, uh, every startups is looking for the individual or professional having strong foundation knowledge on Python because Python is the most preferred language for machine learning, data science, or the artificial intelligence, correct? So for instance, Python offers Django and Flask. These are the popular libraries for web development and TensorFlow and Keras are the uh, popular libraries for data science. And there, is, there are a few more libraries called Pandas, SciPy, Okay, these are the very popular libraries for developing uh, scientific applications. And you can see the list in the slide, Python tops the list, correct? So you can see Python is 29.9%, Python is 100%. So the next language popular after Python 
can be R language or JavaScript. Okay, but Python in most of the surveys, it tops the list. It is widely accepted as the best programming language to learn first. So I teach some uh, kids. I, I teach some kids in the age six to 14 years uh, for the Singapore based uh, training institute. It's, uh, I teach um, kids of age nine to 13 years old. So I teach them Python. So when we were young, our first programming language was C programming. But today, uh, the kids have started their uh, programming knowledge, programming language with Python. So we teach them skills, we teach them different things to do using Python. So even kids have started learning coding using Python. Okay, the most preferred language starting from kids to uh, professionals, adults, students is undoubtedly Python. So most of the uh, big uh, applications like YouTube, Instagram, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Pinterest, SurveyMonkey, all are built using Python. And I'm just, I'm just um, naming few applications. Your games, uh, complicated games, machine learning projects, uh, driverless cars, all, all of these are built using Python. So Python provides excellent library support and has a larger developer community. And Python is open source, means you can download the Python freely into your computer and start learning it. So Python is an open source. So that was the introduction to how important is Python. So the next slide, uh, how, I mean, what are the features of Python? Okay, so you can see Python is a general purpose Okay, high level and interpreted language. General purpose means it is not for a specific domain, correct? It is for almost all the domains. That is the meaning of general purpose. Okay, for example, R, the programming language R, you must have heard the domain of R language is data. Okay, it is widely used in data science, but Python, you can see it's a general purpose. It's domain independent. You can use Python in many domains as a programming language. It is an object oriented programming approach, which supports the concept of classes and objects. And uh, it's very easy to learn. The syntax is very simple. There is no semicolon. There is no uh, exclusively writing integer float and all. Okay. It's a dynamically typed language. You don't have to write int a, you don't have to write float C like that whatever value you assign, the variable takes that data type. So it, it's fairly simple. It supports so many libraries that you can just use them, okay? There are more than thousands, thousand libraries supported by Python. And you can see the features of Python, it's easy to learn and use, and it's very compact. It takes very few lines of code to develop a scientific and uh, complex project, it's interpreted language. So interpreted language, the code is uh, compiled line by line, okay, not as a whole. It's the meaning of interpreted language. Then cross platform, you can execute Python programs on multiple platforms, it's uh, portable, you call, and free and open source, as I told you, you don't have to pay anything, you can download it from the official website, python.org. Then it is object oriented, extensible so large standard library i will be introducing you to few of the libraries supported by python later in this session and finally it provides you uh, gui programming support so gui uh, you you interact with your device computer phone using the gui right nobody likes command line uh, interface everybody wants graphical user interface so it's very user friendly you interact uh, by double clicking on the icon. Okay, so that is known as GUI support. And Python provides a package, a library called uh, tkinter. I will show you that later. It provides a library called tkinter, which is widely used to develop GUI programming. Okay, so these are the features of Python. It's very easy and the most preferred from kids to professionals and most preferred language for machine learning, data science, and artificial intelligence, gaming, uh, and many more features. 
then everyone wants to learn python but how to um, dedicate yourself to learn python so best practices while coding python so to um, make it to the logical end of the programming so how you should complete successfully how you should complete python successfully these are some best practices what i have what i'm showing you right now so first you must make it clear why you want to learn it correct so it means as i told you python is the most preferred language for data analysis and processing artificial intelligence games then machine learning okay the goal should be clear before learning python it includes number of libraries modules inbuilt functions and data structures if the goal is unclear then uh, it will be a boring process for you you will not be doing the assignments on time you will not be able to do the projects later so your your goal must be clear why you want to learn python if you are interested in machine learning uh, data science developing some games then uh, diving into the concept of driverless cars so python is a strong language for those applications okay so first thing you must make it clear why you want to learn python then learn the basic syntax so as i told you it is the most essential and basic step to learn the syntax of python so we have to learn the basic syntax before diving deeper into learning it and as i told you python is easy to learn and its syntax is fairly simple you will not face any difficulties while learning the syntax of python it doesn't use semicolons and brackets okay i told you this already it doesn't use any semicolons any data types exclusively okay its syntax its syntax is like uh, the plain english language just like you write english language it's almost similar to that it's very simple it will take minimum amount of time to learn this syntax then the next step is write code by your own okay keep practicing at least dedicate one hour after your classes uh, on coding and uh, finding out new things reading articles on python from various websites okay so you be, you should be in touch with python okay just uh, uh, dedicate one hour of time after your classes then write the code by your own then keep practicing then discuss concepts with others do small projects so once you learn the language for a week so just apply your knowledge what you learned throughout the week and try to develop some small projects and explore libraries as i told you there are more than 1000 libraries available in python you will uh, practically you will not be able to uh, know all those libraries but every application you want to develop you will have a library support for that okay python supports python has so many libraries that uh your application whatever application you want to develop there will be a library for that in python okay you just need to discover that and frameworks frameworks and libraries are both same then you can see what are the applications application areas of python so where all the python is used it's used in web applications data science artificial intelligence machine learning scientific computing robotics gaming mobile apps data analysis and pre processing these are just few areas where python is used and uh, <clears throat> the first one is web application you can use python to develop web applications it uh, provides some very popular libraries like uh, django and uh, tensorflow flask bottle okay all these libraries are used for developing web applications one of the python web framework called django is used in instagram so all of you i'm very sure that all of you use instagram so instagram is developed using a web framework called django that's available in python and python provides us many frameworks for web applications then desktop applications desktop gui applications the gui as you know it's a graphical user interface Uh, which is very user friendly you need to interact with your system using the gui and i told you the best and most common gui library provided by python is uh, tk tkinter t 
tkinter stands for tk interface okay so that is the tkinter library for you for developing gui applications then uh, scientific and numeric applications so the most popular libraries for scientific and numeric applications are scipy scikit-learn numpy pandas matplotlib okay so at the end of this session we will execute some simple programs using these uh, libraries so most preferred for machine learning and scientific computing then we have business applications we have audio video based multimedia applications then cad applications computer aided design okay so these are the application areas of python okay then what are the benefits what are the benefits of learning python so first and foremost python is one of the easiest languages to learn you don't need to have any programming experience to start performing data analysis in python okay so you don't have to have any programming knowledge to learn python it's that easy you can right away start with python you don't have to uh, learn the languages like c c++ java to learn python okay python uh, for the kids also they prefer python so unlike and some other languages as i told you like r language and matlab uh, the python has very simple syntax and uh, coding rules okay making it the perfect language for beginners so python is a perfect language for beginners to start with it is also very easy to set it up and uh, start right away you can just download the python idn from the official website or you can use uh, online uh, python compiler like uh, jupyter notebook online to immediately start executing some simple programs then it has quick application development time many areas prefer python to other languages because it's quick application development time okay and uh, it supports so many libraries for data analysis in python uh, it doesn't take nearly as much as time it takes with uh, other languages like uh, microsoft excel or r language because you don't have to waste time writing code from scratch you can just import the libraries and uh, use them for any uh, simple to complicated or complex or scientific applications and we have plenty of online learning resources so compared to any other language python has a lot of online learning resources in youtube in uh, websites so many uh, learning resources online it has the python okay plenty of online learning resources you will not get any doubts okay then extensive data visualization support so python supports taking i mean uh, matplotlib for data visualization uh, it's for the extensive data visualization support and open source libraries and you can see some of the top python libraries are numpy it's a package it's a library for performing linear algebra and high level mathematics okay it it deals with creation of matrix arrays linear algebra okay it provides many functions to perform mathematical operations then we have scipy okay building on top of numpy so numpy is a, a basic library on which many other libraries are built for example scipy and pandas are built on top of numpy so scipy is an excellent library for data scientists and engineers it allows you to work with n dimensional arrays and perform a variety of optimization and linear algebra operations okay so that is the use of scipy and we have scikit learn when we uh, write machine learning algorithms we use scikit learn and scipy libraries a lot of times because uh, all the algorithms for the machine learning are present in these libraries the scipy and scikit learn you just need to know the basics of algorithm you can just import the libraries and whichever algorithm you want you can just use them so it totally makes the code very simple and very short 
and very small okay to perform a complex and scientific project then we have matplotlib matplotlib is for the visualization so you need to create histograms pie charts line charts okay or other professional data visualization for your work so you better understand by graphs by pictures than some theory than some numerical answers right so for data visualization we have matplotlib the library for graphs then finally the most interesting is the pandas pandas is an excellent open source library for data manipulation and analysis okay so pandas uh, doesn't stand for some animals pandas it's a short form for panel data okay panel data i mean the panel data uh, is the pandas so pandas means panel data okay that's uh, that's how the name came for pandas it's a very interesting and excellent tool for data analysis to um, for statistics uh, how to how you fill the missing values uh, do you have to ignore the uh, things that have null values or do you have to fill with some values if you want to fill with some values what values you want to fill do you want to fill with some mean values or median values so all those things are available in pandas okay so you can import you can download any data set and you can feed that data set to the pandas and you will have a lot of options to play with that data set okay so the functions are cannot be counted in pandas okay you have you can constantly discover the functions that are available in pandas so when you are uh, dealing with a data set you will realize how important and how interesting is the pandas library okay so these are the top python libraries numpy scipy scikit-learn matplotlib and pandas then finally let's see what jobs um, you in you can land if you learn python okay so there are many jobs in the market not only engineers okay i will tell you the importance of python uh, learning python so not only engineers so you can see python developer the python developer is expected to build websites using the libraries in python then optimize the algorithms then solve data analytics problems implementing the security and the data protection so write uh, some reusable testable and efficient code so the most common is the python developer then product manager okay the product managers uh, responsible for researching new user features okay find gaps in the market to do some business decisions and make an argument for why certain products should be built okay so the main tasks of product manager is to find the gaps in the market and build some products to fill those gaps then because data everywhere the data is created right you every individual unknowingly he creates so much of data every minute okay so every minute uh, individual may generate uh, megabytes of data so it, the world has so many crore population so everywhere the data is generated when you exchange emails when you message to someone when you shop online when you shop offline when you purchase something okay when you open a website okay it is just when you open a website you are creating some data so the data plays a huge role in the work of product managers okay then the data analyst then we have educators okay so someone should be available for you to, to teach python right that's the task of educators now since the world has gone online due to the pandemic now the online education has is getting more uh, scope and uh, python and some technical languages are in boom so educator is also one job that you can land if you learn python but uh, to teach others to teach i mean to become a educator you need to be very careful and uh, to learn many things to become an educator then 
financial advisors okay many business schools many business schools in the world are introducing the python course you may or may not know every college every institute every university which has a business study has a course on python machine learning or data science so not only engineers i said even the business schools are introducing python okay it is the most uh, successful course in their history so even in the business sector python plays a very important role because wherever data is there the data analysis must be done okay and uh, the doctors even the doctors should learn python because uh, if you have heard about uh, medical data analysis if you have heard about medical data analysis so what is again analysis it is again by using python right so even the doctors should learn python to get the medical data analyst jobs so not only engineers everyone even the commerce students and the python is needed in commerce in medical in healthcare in education in finance in business everywhere the python is needed then finally the data journalist data journalism is a speciality within journalism that uses data to tell stories right so even the journalism field needs data and where there is data there should be python okay so these are the jobs you can land if you learn python the most common is the developer then product manager data analyst then educator then in healthcare okay in almost every domain then financial advisors then finally the data journalist okay then now i will uh, show you some interesting programs in python we have a data type called list in python so if you have learned c c++ java uh, you know the data types are integer float string characters right so in python along with those basic data types we have few more data types called list dictionary and tuples so let me show you uh, what is a list okay so list you can see the definition is used to store the sequence of various types of data so a list can store data the data can be of the i mean the list can store many values the values can be of same same data type or multiple data type okay you can see the l1 equals john 102 and usa here john and usa are strings whereas 102 is an integer then l2 equals 1 2 3 4 5 6 so that is a values of same type and the lists should be enclosed in square brackets you can see the square brackets here it's a very interesting data type and uh, the applications of lists are many you can use the lists in uh, numpy you can use the lists in uh, pandas uh, you can use the lists in machine learning algorithms so the applications of lists are many okay and what are the characteristics of data so what are the features of lists in python the lists are ordered it means each value in the list has a location for example in the list 2 the location of 0 i mean the location of 1 is 0 that is the index always starts from 0 so 0 1 2 3 4 5 the location the index of 6 is 5 it means the lists are ordered every value in the list has a location you can access the values by giving their index then the element of the list can be accessed by index that's what i told you you can access the elements by index by their index lists are mutable you can change the list you can add a new value you can uh, remove a value okay you can uh, add one more list into a list you can join two lists that is the meaning of mutable you can change you can do a lot of things on lists okay the lists are mutable types a list can store a number of various elements means uh, it can store values of different data types so let me show you a simple example on list so hope you can see my screen so i'm using python idle here 
so we need to first save the file i will save it as list.py so since we have less time let me copy this code and uh, okay let me create let me create a list so you can see my list equals in the square bracket i'm creating some values some strings okay then some floating values so like this so this is a list you have to create using square bracket then if i say print list so i think you can see the output it has printed the list 6543 bcv and fgh are strings and 3.5 is a floating value correct now i told you uh, list is ordered means every value in the list has a location and the location starts from zero correct so if i say print list of three what is list of three so the zero is six one is five two is four and uh, location three is three and uh, print list of six so zero one two three four five six the six is the last element that is 3.5 so let's run this program so you can see the output the list of three is three list of six is 3.5 so this is known as indexing you can access the value by giving the location and the last location starts from minus one just like the first location starts from zero and we don't have a minus zero the last location starts from negative one so the negative one is also 3.5 okay you can see the output it is 3.5 and minus two is the second last value that is fgh so you can see fgh so you can do many things on the list because list is mutable let me show you one very simple function the list dot append of 10 so the append is a function on list so the append function will add a new value at the end of the list okay at the end of the list so 10 will be added at the end of this list so then print you can see the output the 10 is added at the end of the list so the append function is used to add a new value at the end of the list if you want to uh, add a new value at some other location there is a function called insert insert you can add a new value anywhere you want the first you must uh, mention the index for example i want to insert 10 at index 0 so like this so list dot insert 0 comma 10 so this will add 10 at the beginning of the list so you can see now the 10 is at the beginning okay so there are around 20 functions on the list uh, i'm showing you only the two functions that is the insert and append function there are many other functions like uh, copy extend okay then remove find index okay so all these are the different functions on list so list you can see the definition i hope you have got a basic idea of what is a list it's an ordered data type you can access the values by giving the index and they are mutable and they should be enclosed in a square bracket okay so see this slide So if you can access only one value at a time, it is known as indexing. For example, list of zero, list of one, list of two, list of three, you can see here, you can access only one value at a time. But if you can access more than one value at a time, it is known as slicing, okay, slicing. You can access more than one value at a time. So here I have given list in the square bracket zero colon means it starts from the index zero, okay, 
and goes till the end. Okay, I have given a starting index, but I have not given the stopping index. It means it starts from index zero and goes till the end. So it will print zero, one, two, three, four, five. If I don't give the starting and stopping index, then it will print me the entire list. Okay, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Then two colon four means it starts from index two. So what is index two? Zero, one, two. The index two is two, and two three. It goes till three. It doesn't take four. So four is exclusive here. Okay, so it prints the values from index two and three. So the values are two and three. Okay, then one to three. One to three means starting index is one, and it will print the index two also. Three is exclusive. Okay, three is not included. So it prints one and two. And you can see here there is no starting index. I have given only the stopping index. So in this case, it starts from the beginning. That is zero one two. But four is exclusive. Okay, four will not be printed. The index four, the value in the index four will not be printed. Okay, so this is known as slicing. If you can access only one value, it is known as indexing. If you can access more than one value, it is slicing. So hope it is clear. Then, okay, the next uh, is a very interesting program. to remove the punctuation marks from a string okay so your string for example i will show my program so if i say string equals i is a b c d e f i am 18 years old i have singing comma then string two equals file number hash okay, numbers okay so your string will be having some punctuation marks right so how to remove those punctuations so see this program a program to remove punctuation from the string so you must first decide what punctuations you will use okay so you must first decide the punctuations you can see here double quotes single quotes exclamatory mark brackets hyphen square brackets curly braces then colon slash backslash forward slash so all these come under punctuation okay then you need to enter a string you need to enter a string which may contain some punctuations from this list okay from these your string may contain some punctuations from these uh, symbols then we create a variable called no punctuation and we will initialize it to empty there is nothing inside it okay it's empty now it's a loop here do you see for character in my string so it means we will go through the string what you have entered we will scan each and every element we will scan each and every letter in your string so the meaning of for character in my string is we will start from the beginning of your string we will scan each and every letter of your string okay till the end so for character in my string if character not in punctuation okay if character not in punctuation if uh, if the character is valid if the character is a letter like a to z it means it is not in the punctuation so you can see here in the punctuation there is no letter only punctuation is there so if character is not in punctuation so if this condition is true so we will add that character to this no punctuation so the no punctuation is empty okay so we will go on adding the valid letters to this no punctuation variable if the string has the punctuations from these symbols that particular letter will not be added to the no punctuation if the character is not in punctuation only if this condition is true then that letter will be added to the no punctuation then finally we will display the no punctuation 
variable. So let me copy this. So let me run this. So invalid, what is this? Situation. Mm. Valid character and identify. Okay, there's a space here. once you give a colon here the indentation starts it means the block of code will start you see it's a little indented towards the right side so uh, you create the blocks using curly braces in other languages but in python we use a colon to create a code block okay So let me write this punctuation. We need to define the punctuations, then my string. Punctuation equals nothing. The character in my string. The character not in punctuations. No punctuation equals no punctuation plus character print no punctuation. R equals hello there, then So we copied it from the slide, maybe some problem. U n equals maybe 
these are the punctuations. So I'm selecting only these as the punctuations and take input from the user. My string equals not there, then because we have just copied this character in string. So it's a one tab space when you give a colon, just to remind you, no punctuation plus no punctuation plus character in the screen of punctuation. code is correct i'm pretty sure but uh, it's giving me some unique error which is uh, not expected string My string. Okay. No punctuation. So you see, we are getting one error, no punctuation is not defined. So we have to make it as NOP. So now you see, uh, hello there, colon, I mean, uh, it's uh, exclamatory mark and I'm a student because they are appearing in the output also because in the punctuation, I have not defined them. You can see here in my punctuation, I have not given them as the punctuation. So if I give them, for example, exclamatory mark and full stop as punctuations. Now those uh, punctuations will be removed from the string. So now the exclamation mark and uh, the full stop will be removed. Let's run it again. So you see, it's free of the punctuations. So you need to decide which punctuations you need to uh, use in your program. So if you say these are the punctuations, then those will be removed. Okay, so this was the program to remove the punctuation. Since we copied it from the slide, there was some unexpected spaces or the un invalid letters. It happens when we copy from the slide. Then sorting, to sort the words in a sentence, in the ascending order. So for example, you want to sort the words present in the string in the ascending order. Then you need to use a function called split function. Okay. So split is a function available in strings, available for strings in Python. So let me show you how it works. Let me explain you also. So we need to find those invalid first okay so first you need to enter the string first you need to enter the string my screen is little uh, uh, broken so i'm just bringing the code little down okay so my string equals input a string so you need to enter a string which can have any words in it then using the split function, you will split each word. So how do you split the words? Because each word will be separated by space, right? So if the program sees space in your string, it will 
split those words by seeing those spaces. So every word will be split on spaces. So when there is a space, the word will be split. So let's print the output here at this point. Print words. Okay. Now just I will run this program. Okay. So I'm just entering the string. And if there is a space, I'm splitting. I'm using the split function. Then I will print that output. So enter the string. I am interested to learn Python. So you see there are some spaces here, white spaces. So when I hit enter, you can see when there is a space, that word will be split and the result will be a list. You see a list, uh, square brackets. So it will be shown as a, as a list. And when there is a space, the words will be split. So when we split the words using the split function, now you can apply the sort function. You see here the sort function, which is supported by the strings to sort in ascending order. Okay. So words dot sort. Once you split the words, it's easy to sort them. Now this is a comment. So for word in words, print word. Now you can see the output. Okay. So we'll write it for word in words. So enter the word. I am interested in learning Python. So you see, first it splits, then it uh, it arranges them in the ascending order. I am in interested learning Python. So I, since it is in uppercase letter, it is uh, coming first. Okay, because the ASCII value it depends on the ASCII value. So the ASCII values of uppercase letters are lower than the ASCII values of lowercase letters. So the I comes first. If I make I as small case, I will show you that output again. So these are the words sorted in ascending order. So first A comes, then I comes, then again L, then finally P. So these are the words sorted in ascending order. So let me enter the different string you are interested in so enter so you can see R comes first then D A B C D E F G H I then finally U okay so this is the sort function first you need to split using the split function then by using the sort function because there is no function to split and to sort in other languages. I have not seen in C, C++, the functions like sort or the split function. So you can see here, the code is so simple and so small. It's just completed in five to six lines. If you want to sort the words in descending order, then you will need to write your reverse equals two. So the reverse equals two will sort them in yes descending order. So it is in the descending order. U V I. Okay, first is the U. I mean, first is Y, then W, then I. So hope this is understood to sort the words in ascending or descending order. Reverse equals to means it sorts in the descending order. So this was the sorting function. Then the t -kinter. I told you right, the t -kinter is a very popular module, popular library for developing GUI applications. You all interact with the computer using GUI, the graphical user interface. Okay, and uh, you can see what widgets what widgets does the t -kinter has. So you all know these, right? Button, canvas, check button, entry, frame. So let me show you in case if you don't know. 
so button widget so whenever you click on something or submit button so all those are the buttons okay button widget So you see there's okay here okay is a button then hello is a button then click me all these are the buttons then we have labels on uh, login page the most the best example is login page so you see i will open this image so the login and user id and password these are the examples of labels just to show some text you cannot change that or you cannot click on that so the plain text is called as label and you can see here the white space where you can enter your email id and password so these are known as entry entry widgets in tkinter then finally login is a button okay so like this the basic building blocks of tkinter you can call them as widgets so we have button uh, label okay entry frame list box menu so you can see the menu here right so when i click on insert i will get some options when i click on design i get some options transitions like this when i click on file i get these options so these are known as menu so you can also create menu using tkinter okay so tkinter is a very popular language a popular library so how to use the tkinter import import so from tkinter import star it means tkinter is a library and i want to import every feature every feature from tkinter so i'm writing star so from tkinter import start then i will create a root window root window is known as parent window where uh, all your widgets will appear okay so you need to uh, create this root without fail without forgetting so root equals tk then root dot geometry so what is the height and width of this root window i will say 500 by 400 pixels so then finally root dot main loop so the main loop is to show the output as long as you want so these are the four most common steps in uh, tkinter programming first you need to import the library by using the import and from statements then create the root the parent window where you want to draw all the widgets then the height and width of the parent window then finally Uh, to show the output when i when i execute this program you will see this is the root window what you see on the screen this is known as the root window the height and width is 500 by 400 pixels now let me create a login page for you so to login to create login page we need uh, labels we need entry box and we need uh, uh, buttons right so label 1 equals label so label should come on the root window correct so the first thing i should write is root because this label should come on the root then text equals the name okay then the background of this label should be red foreground the text color the username color should be yellow i will write yellow similarly i will create one more label for the password okay so once this is how to create the widgets the label widget l should be capital then we need to use geometry managers to actually place them on the root window so i will write label 1 dot grid row equals 3 column equals 3 then finally the label 
it should come in the next line, right? So I will change the row number. I will make it four. Means the next line. Row four, column three. Now just I will execute this program. You see the output. Lab two is not defined. Where is lab two? Okay, this is lab two. Label two. You see the output. I have created two labels with background uh, red and foreground yellow. Now for this, I should create the entry box now to create the to enter the text. So E1 equals entry on the root. Similarly, E2 equals entry on the root. Then E1 dot red. So the first entry should come next to the first label. So the row name, sh the row should be same. Column should increase. The next entry should come below the first entry. So the row number should be four and column can be same. Now see the output. So the output is visible, right? You can type some text here. So this is the entry. So this is row three, column five. This is row four, column five. Now I need a button to click to submit. So B U T T equals button on the root. Text equals submit. Okay. Similarly, the background can be red. I can select different colors. Let me show you. Background equals um, maybe B and foreground B. B. Then finally, pack. And dot pack, it should be below label two. So those should be five. Column should be four. So add option. Where is it? Row five. Okay. It's not pack, it's grid. Uh, by mistake, load pack. It should be grid function. Okay, now you see the complete output. It's a very simple one to create a login page. So you cannot click on username and password. Password. These are the labels, but you can click on button. You see, you can click on the button. So you can type some text in the entry box and you can click on the button. So this is a example for tkinter, very simple and very basic one. It supports many other things. I'm just showing you the nine widgets. It has around uh, 15 or 16 widgets. So this is about tkinter, tk interface. Toolkit interface is the full name. Toolkit interface uh, means TK inter. Then finally, the Python NumPy tutorial. So NumPy, as I told you, it's a very popular library for mathematical and uh, mathematical applications to create arrays, matrix, and uh, linear algebra. Okay. So this is a NumPy package. It stands for numerical Python. Okay. So NumPy means numerical Python. It's a very uh, popular package for the computation and the processing of the multidimensional and single dimensional array elements. So it's uh, extensively used in SciPy, Pandas. Okay. Okay. And uh, these are the things you can do. I mean, very few I'm showing you. You can do so many other things. You can create a empty matrix using the empty function. You can create a matrix with all values zero using the zeros function. You can create a matrix with all ones using the ones function, then the seal function and the floor function. Okay, these are the two. Uh, there are so many functions available in NumPy. I'm just showing you the few functions, empty, zeros, ones, seed function, and float function, okay?
then for linear algebra okay if you want to perform some some linear algebra operations the numpy provides these functions dot product v dot function then inner function inner product then matrix multiplication then determinant to find the determinant of a matrix then to solve the um, linear algebra expressions okay then to find the inverse okay to find the multiplicative inverse of a matrix then the, to solve the expression of the linear algebra then to find the determinant and for the matrix multiplication inner product uh, vector product and dot product so these are the few functions there are still many functions supported by linear algebra which is present inside numpy okay so these are for linear algebra operations then pandas as i told you pandas is a very interesting and extensive package you can uh, you can list what a pandas cannot do okay you cannot i mean rather than listing what a pandas can do you can list what a panda cannot do okay so pandas can do so many things on a data set okay so it's used for reshaping and pivoting the data sets and the group okay then handling multiple operations it supports slicing then reorder reshape without actually uh, manipulating your data set it does so many things okay you can use this pandas library many times in your machine learning algorithms then finally we see this matplotlib okay matplotlib as i told you is for visualization let me run this program x equals 527 okay let me run matplotlib so for matplotlib i need to open jupyter notebook online so this is one more the uh, platform to execute your python programs with jupyter notebook online so click on classic notebook and wait for few seconds till the file loads sometimes very sometimes it may not load but uh, you need to wait for at least 30 seconds to get it loaded so you need the network for this but the idle which i was using it is offline but jupiter is online okay let me first explain you by the time it loads so you need to import the matplotlib okay this is a library name you need to import it first from matplotlib import pyplot pyplot is a very famous module inside matplotlib for plotting purpose then uh, for plotting you need two axes right x and y axis so this 1 2 3 is the x axis this 4 5 1 is the y axis so the plot function the plot function will plot a graph against x axis and y axis that is 1 2 3 4 5 1 1 2 3 is for x axis and 4 5 1 is the y axis you are plotting the graph using the plot function then the show function is to show the graph it is still not loading so one more example you can see i'm creating x and y values separately x equals 5 to 7 y equals 1 10 4 then plot x against y correct then the title you can give the title for your graph using the title function then uh, you can give a label for y axis using the y label function you can give a label for the x axis using the x label function okay so finally plt dot show it's still not loading 
so these are these are the two examples very basic examples you can do a lot more using matplotlib it is yet again uh, one more very interesting library for data visualization supported by python okay you can add the colors you can add the different symbols you can uh, draw any type of graph using the matplotlib so this again one more package for data visualization then so benefits so you must you can you may ask us uh, that uh, you will learn python uh, by using the online resources as i told you python has uh, a lot of a vast amount of online resources then uh, what is the reason to go for the python certification okay so what are the reasons you can see here what are the reasons for getting a python certification so it's a proof of your expertise the certification will also give you how good you are in this subject right what is your performance what is your skill level uh, how quickly you can solve a given problem how quickly you can come to a solution for a given problem and what is your level of expertise so the certificate in your hand is a proof for your expertise in python so it's a strong reason to go for certification in python rather than uh, learning from the online resources if you uh, want to show the proof of your expertise then you need to get one or the other certificate in python okay you cannot i mean you can be a, you can be perfect in online resources but uh, what the certification do what the certification does is they will train you with some very good industry projects correct that is where you need to have a practical hands on in python so that's the use of the uh, certification in python then the second one it gives you a sense of achievement right so sense of achievement means we give you assignment we give you task you need to solve few things which you don't do uh, in using online resources right you don't meet your deadlines you don't meet your timelines so but in certification you put extra effort you put extra time to get the things done so when you get the certificate with good grades and with good scores you get a very good sense of achievement if i'm not wrong correct then it gives you a competitive edge it the certification will will enable you to think with the industry perspective how the industry expects the candidates to perform in the environment right it gives you a competitive edge because the competition is big and there are so many vacancies there are so many positions open for the python professionals but the professionals are not good enough to grab the opportunity so the certification will enable you to have a competitive edge then it paves the road for the better jobs okay you will know better if you complete a certification you know better what are the uh, right ways to get into a better jobs correct then finally you will bring lots of benefits to the organization so the organizations also will get benefits from your skills and knowledge okay so when you have a very good hands on the language you can go to a different level you can go to the next level which will obviously benefit the organizations where you are working so these are the benefits of having a python certification so hope uh, i have made few things clear for you uh, now we can open for the question and answer session if you have any types of questions uh, there are also experts with us uh, even they can uh, try to answer you or if you have any doubts uh, with my presentation you can ask me now we are open for questions and answers hi um, this is ray from london yeah hi uh, hi uh, firstly thank you very much and well done to have gone through a lot of information in thank you a short space of time um so two things firstly are you going to give certificates of attendance for this that's one and yes. secondly do you have um another 
course that is a bit more detailed than this? Uh, the, this is just an introduction to the Python and the importance of Python and what will be the future of Python. Uh, if I mean, the course will obviously be uh, very uh, extending, I mean, the very informative, yeah. we will mm -hmm. cover uh, from basics to expert level. So the course will be designed to match the expectations of the students. Okay. So, yeah. So um, something like that I will be interested in. Yes, and yes. Um, also, I don't know if you know anything about Oracle Vaults. Uh, Oracle. So the Oracle means SQL, right? Yeah. So SQL, yeah. Yeah, SQL is uh, the domain of SQL can be the data which uh, you can learn in data science course. So the data science course covers the basics of SQL, the queries, then uh, the uh, the order by, sort by uh, queries yeah, in SQL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, in Python, I mean, the, for machine learning, uh, the SQL is not so mandatory, but for data science, having a strong knowledge on SQL is a must. It's a must, okay. Yeah. So the, you're going to be able to provide any further details at the end of this in terms of courses that you have. Um, yeah, I, really I, I think the experts, I mean, the, uh, the people from UPLAX will uh, answer the question regarding the courses. Hey, hi, Puneet. Hi, hi. hi, hi uh, Bhaskar. Hello. Hi, this is Bhaskar from UPLAX. I'm the owner of uh, the company. Um, uh, well, I think, uh, sorry, who asked this question? Um, it's Ray, Raymond. Hey, hi, Ray, hi, Ray. Um, hi. Hope you liked the session today. Very much so, yes. <laughs> very nice, very nice, yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, whatever details you need, um, like, you know, we'll be sending a default email uh, to everyone with okay. all the courses, you know, which are available and what's the best thing that we can uh, do for you guys, mm -hmm. along with this event uh, certificate as well so okay. we'll be emailing everything and uh -huh. then on top of that email you can reply back uh, with your custom requirement and you know we can talk and we can figure it out what best we can do for you brilliant cool. brilliant thank you and thank, way, as thank I you i told you that the uh, uh, they have uh, they have uh, expertise in placing the students in a very good companies so you can uh, talk you can take it further also okay yeah it, it would be good to have some kind of contact details um if i would like yeah, to have we'll provide you we'll provide that okay yes brilliant 